Okay, let's get down to some specific songs, to the music itself. Here is a cheery bit by the Beatles. Now, that's not just cheery, it's also very unorthodox. For one thing, it suddenly, if you noticed, leaves out a beat so that an ordinary four-beat measure becomes a three-beat measure. Listen. You see, just one sudden bar of three among all those fours we never used to find that in pop music. It's new. And then just as suddenly, there was that arbitrary change of key. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Sort of tart, pungent. Then there was that odd little cannon at the end, a sort of round. Good day, What a way to fade out in a new key, a shifting meter, a sudden new counterpoint. But that's the Beatles, always unpredictable and a bit more inventive than most. You know a remarkable song of theirs called She Said, She Said? Well, in that song, which goes nicely along in four, there's again a sneaky switch to three-quarter time, only this time it's not just for one bar, but for a whole passage. She said, you don't understand what I said. I said, no, 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 you're wrong. When I was a boy, everything was right. Did you get it? If not, listen again to the Beatles this time. She said, you don't understand what I said. Three, four, I said, no, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And we're back again safely in the old four beat. Now the point I want to make is that such oddities as this are not just tricks or show-off devices. In terms of pop music's basic English, so to speak, they are real inventions. And it's not only the Beatles who make these inventions. For instance, pop generation has rejected that old chromatic sound as too sophisticated. The sound of an older, slicker generation. The old-fashioned sound of the cocktail lounge. This new music is much more primitive in its harmonic language. It relies more on the simple triads. The basic harmony of folk music. Never forget that this music employs a highly limited musical vocabulary. Limited harmonically, rhythmically, and melodically. But within that restricted language, all these new adventures are simply extraordinary. Only think of the sheer originality of a Beatles tune, like this one, which, uh, again, uses only the elementary resources of pop music. I was alone, I took a ride, I didn't know what I would find there. Well, that could almost be by Schumann. It's so expansive and romantic. And notice how the range of the melody has been expanded. Most pop tunes have in the past been restricted to the range of an octave or so, owing to the limitations of pop singers' vocal ranges. But not so anymore. Our pop generation reaches and spreads itself, grasping at the unattainable. And this is one of the things I like most about it, the straining tenderness of those high, untrained young voices. And, uh, as always, the Beatles. Of course, whereas I may call that a straining after falsetto dreams of glory, you may call it nothing but a breakdown in gender, that same androgynous phenomenon of the pop scene that produces boys with long hair and ruffled shirts. And you may be right, but back to the music. What else do I like about it? I like the eclecticism of it, its freedom to absorb any and all musical styles and elements, like old blues, 
Or a high Bach trumpet. That's Penny Lane, Beatles. Or even a string quartet. Curious. Then I like the international and interracial way it ranges over the world, borrowing from the ragas of Hindu music. Then I like some of the new sounds, purely as sound, that are coming out of pop music. The arresting impact of a consort of amplified guitars. One, two, three, five! The sound. 